Hello everyone. Now we will study the irreducible set of attributes or you can say the minimal cover or you can say the standard form of attribute. So we have functional dependencies. Let's say we have five functional dependencies. So we will do some things to make it minimum. That is called as minimal cover. So let's read on the board. Now once we identify the functional dependencies from the requirement, let's say F1 and F2. So now total functional dependency capital F is equal to F1 plus F2. So F2 is additional functional dependency that we may identify. So now before we will move towards normalization, we will find out the minimal cover or you can say the irreducible set of attributes. So we will uh, be evaluated in three cases. So we will find out, we will do the three things. First thing is we will uh, find out the redundant right hand side attribute. Then we will find out a redundant left hand side attribute and then we will find out a redundant functional dependency. So there is a procedure, uh, there is a small algorithm. Uh, I will explain this. Now we will have this example. Uh, we have to make convert it into the minimal cover or irreducible set. So let's start the, with the procedure. So what I will do, I will first find out the closure from here. Okay. So I will find out the original functional dependencies closure. So A closure will be A, then I will have B, okay, so, uh, okay, only A, B, okay, because no other uh, I can find out, okay. Now we will have C closure from the original functional dependencies. So what is C closure here? C determines uh, C itself, then C determines uh, B, okay, then uh, again, uh, okay, so I will have only this set. Then I will find out D closure. So D closure will be uh, D determines D itself and D det determining A, B, C. Okay. Those are the original set of like closure for attributes. Then I will find out AC closure. That will be equal to now AC determines AC itself. AC determines D. Okay. Now here D determines uh, A, B, C. So it is already present. I can write down here B, C, okay. And C determines B, B is present, A, B, C, D all are uh, present here. C is repeated, so I will remove and this is the closure set of attributes. Now what the procedure says, what we have to do, first find out and finding out minimal cover, we will find, we will split those above uh, dependencies like this. So we will do like this, A determines B, B, then C determines B, then we have D determines a, so we will split this like this. We can write down according to the inference rules. So it determines B. Also D determines uh, C. Remember, we cannot write down, suppose AC determines, uh, let's say B is one of the functional dependency. Or uh, here AC determines D is one of the functional dependency. So we cannot split like this. A determines uh, D and A determines C. This is wrong. Okay. But if we have D determines ABC, then we can make it determines A, determines B and determines C. Okay. Now understand this example. So we have converted and lastly we will do with AC determines D. Okay. So now I am going to give the numbering 1, 2, 3, then 4, then 5. So we will work on this step up to the fifth one. So what we will do here, uh, this is very important step. Please understand. Now I will find out the A closure from 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Expect like I will not consider first one. Okay. So I will not consider without this. I will find out A closure and I will try to match with the original one. Okay. So now what is the A closure if you remove? So if you find out A closure, so we will only let A closure is equal to we will have only uh, A. Okay. A closure will be only A. Okay, so now we will find out uh, C closure from 1, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Okay, so I will write down C closure is equal to, what will be the C closure in this case? If I will not consider this, then C closure will be only C. Okay. So what I will do, I will go again with D. So I will find out D closure from so 1, 
two, four, five, and six. So I will. Uh, I have skipped here three. Okay. First, I have skipped here one. I have skipped here two. I have skipped here three. So again, uh, what is the closure? So I will find out the A D closure will be D closure will be. So now we don't have to consider this. So D closure will be D B C. Okay. B. Okay. D B C. So I will have here. D B C. Okay. Now we will have again D closure for this attribute. So we will find out from uh, one, two, three, five, and six. So I will not consider here what I will not consider here the fourth one. So we will find out here. If I skip this, then I will find out. Okay. So D determines D itself. Then here D determines A according to third. Then again D determines here C. So I will add here C. Okay. Again, A C determines B. B is present here. So C determines B. So C is present here. Okay. And I think all is over. A determines B already present. Okay. Now I will find out D closure from. Uh, now I will consider one, two, three, four, and six. I will skip here five. So we will find out the D closure again. D closure is equal to. I will not consider this. Remember. So how to find out D closure? So I will consider D determines D itself. D determines A according to this. D determines B. So I will write here B. Okay, this is not there and nothing is present. So D A B. Okay, so this is the closure for uh, D closure. Now here what we have to check? Just check if we uh, remove this first one, then A closure should be A B, but it is only A. So we will not remove this dependency because it is meaningful dependency. Okay. Now again check C determines B. So can we get here C determines B? What is the C closure here? C B. But we are getting C closure here only C. It should be C B. Miss what? If we remove this because in this calculating this closure, we do not we did not consider this functional dependency. So we did not consider this functional dependency. That's why the C closure is not original one. So we can say that this is also meaningful functional dependency. Okay, so we will move towards it determines a. So here it determines a. Uh, you can get what is the functional dependency d b c. But what is original one for d closure? So d closure must be d a b c. So you can see this here a is missing. This is incomplete closure. So you can say that this is also meaningful functional dependency because when we don't consider this, we cannot we are not getting the all attributes. Uh, of D closure from original functional dependency. Okay, now we will consider this one. This is now interesting. Please understand. Here D determines B. So what is closure for this is D A B C D A C B. So we are getting all attributes without considering this one. Even we don't consider this functional dependency. Still we are getting all attributes as original functional dependency. So that means that this is redundant. Functional dependency, and we can remove this. Okay, so please mark it. Then we can go. We, we can move towards D determines C. So what is D closure for? This is D A B, and it is also incomplete. It is not complete. It is not having all attributes D A B C. Okay, so that means what? This is also the meaningful functional dependency, and we cannot remove this. So this case handling, I will talk. Uh, I will talk uh, just uh, a few minutes later. But first, understand. So what we will do now? We will move. We will remove this functional dependency because we have found out this is a redundant functional dependency. Okay. Hope you have understood this. Now in this case, uh, we have modified the functional dependencies. We have removed D determines B. So now we get a new set: A determines B, C determines D, D determines C, C and A determines A C determines D. Now for handling case of More than two attributes on left hand side, we have to work on special like uh, steps or special procedure. So this like this. So what we will do first in this case, we will write your original functional dependency. A determines B, C determines B, D determines C, and A C determines D. Now what we will do here, we will write as it is, but we will here remove A from the A C. Okay. So I am writing here D determines C, and I will write here C determines A. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, A C. Uh, this is like this. Uh, C determine D. Okay. Now again in this case, I will keep all the. Uh, I will write the left hand side as it is. A determines B. C determines B. D determines C. And A C determines D. And I will remove here the part called. Remove 
C. Okay, so I will remove here C. So what is uh, C here? A determines again B. Then C determines uh, B. D determines C, and uh, I have removed the C, so it will be A determine uh, D. Okay. So now how to find out this? Now here, what we will do? We will find out C closure for from this left hand side. So what is C closure here? C closure will be C then B. Okay. C B then uh, I am not getting anything. Okay. So C B it will be C closure. Again, I will find out C closure from this. So C closure will be here. Uh, what is C closure? C determines C. C determines D. Okay. Then uh, C determines B. Okay. And then uh, nothing. Okay. So actually, for removing the attribute A, they should be same. But in this case, you can find out they are not equal. Okay. So now again, we will go for this. So we will find out A closure from both the sides. So I will find out A closure from here. So A determines A, then A determines B. Okay. So we are not getting any more. And you can see here from left hand side, we will find out A closure from this state. A closure is equal to uh, A determines A, A determines B, A determines D, okay, D determines C, and C determines B. All are present. And here in this case, you can see that this is also, they are also not equal, okay. So we cannot remove any attribute, we cannot e remove A, and we cannot remove the C. So final functional dependencies or canonical cover in this case will be this one, that is what A determine B. Then uh, uh, you can say uh, C determine B, then D determine C, then uh, uh, D determines A. I have missed here D determine A. Okay, so I need to write here D determine A. Okay, because this one original one I cannot remove because I have removed D determine B. So D determine B will not be present here. So I will find out here D determines A. I will again write here D determine A and D determine A. Okay. Okay. So now again we will check cross check about the functional dependencies C D B and here uh, D determine A means what here we will have A. And again, I will I can find out here determine in this case A determines uh, A B and A determines A B C D. So all our other closures are correct. Only I have added A here because I have written determines A here. So the determines A closure will be here. Okay. So all the uh, other part is correct. So no? okay. So the fun final functional dependence will be determines A determines B C determines B determines C as well as you can write shortly here A. That is AC and final one will be AC determines D. Okay. So it determines AC and AC determines D. So this is the final functional dependency or you can say the canonical cover for this functional dependency. In the case, suppose in this case, if we have matched with the two closure, then I have removed here A means what? A I will remove. So I will not A in the canonical cover and further I will move towards the uh, first step that we have done that we have checked uh, the uh, closure set of every functional dependencies left hand side and we match with the original one. So that step we have to again repeat still we can uh, till the time we can remove or we can minimize the canonical cover. So we will see the another example where we will have uh, the two sides matching and then we will have uh, we will again move towards solve the second step and we will solve. Okay. So this is uh, the canonical cover for this functional dependency. Hope you have understood. Thank you very much. If you have like some questions, you can write in a comment. And if you like my uh, videos, if you like the learning teaching, then just uh, you can uh, subscribe my channel and you can like the videos.